All right, now it comes time to remove this air handler. Now the air handler is held on to these uh, same two top posts that were holding on to that, uh, or I should say securing that radiator. Now before we remove the air handler, we have to remove the hose right here. This is just kind of a, a clip. All I have to do is push up on it, get them out of the way. Uh, this is the coolant hose. It runs from that radiator fill cap there from the overflow tank right up here. So I'm just going to tuck him out of the way. Keep him from getting in my way for later. All right. The other thing I need to do is to remove this wire from this holder right here. There's a... a uh, wire tie there so I'm going to get in there and hopefully just remove that without doing any damage to the wire all right now hopefully I will be able to remove him from there All right, here, this one is right here. Go ahead and uh, snip that. All right, air handler, been removed. Next thing we need to worry about this air distributor, or what they call the distribution line here. We've got a hose here, and it's going to run across the engine. Now, they tell us that we need heat to remove these. So there are three areas, well, three positions here where these fit. Okay, here's one place right here. Okay, there's one in the middle. And there's one clear over on the end here. So I need to get in there and heat these things up with a heat gun. Hopefully make them pliable enough to allow me to remove them. Okay, here's that uh, air distribution uh, tube there. I removed it, you can see. That's one of the sockets that these three things go in. So it's done. That was a joy to remove. I was sweating. The thing's plastic. And I don't know how this thing's going to work when it gets 100,000 miles on it. But anyways, it was still pliable enough that I didn't crack it. Uh, I was sweating a little bit because it did take a bit of force to pry them out. But I got them out. Now, I'm just going to tuck this thing up out of the way. Uh, that's the hose off of the end of it. I'm going to put him up there so he's not hanging in my way. Okay, next thing. Removing these coils. Now, as far as the coils go, these are these teeny tiny little pencil coils. Stupid beasts are expensive too. Uh, one of the other things that I need to do is replace one of these coils. It's number five. I've got a code for it. Uh, unfortunately, there is no information in the, the manual that I got with this bike. So I went to all the forums Pretty much any thing with that code in it, I think it's a 21FE22, they're saying replace the coils. Uh, I really would have liked to have thrown a scope on there to see what was going on. Uh, unfortunately, the lovely manual that I have, to the best of my knowledge, has no wiring schematics in it either. Uh, so I was hoping maybe to tie into a fuse, get a current ramp or something. Uh, but uh, again, I've got nothing. So. Uh, We'll replace number five coil and see if it cures the problem anyways. All right, now on this, I don't know if you can see that real, yeah, you can see that pretty well. The instructions are real clear uh, not to pry anything up on here. Now I will tell you right here, if I raise that up with a little pick, teeny tiny little screwdriver, that sucker will unplug easy enough. But BMW says don't do that because you'll probably break it. So what they tell you to do is push that away from that lock. 
Now, I thought, well, what kind of stupid way is that? But the Germans evidently accounted for that. I'm going to push down on this connector, okay, and then pull it out. That's the plan anyways. And out he comes. So I need to do that to all six of them and uh, get that wiring up out of the way if I can so it's not in my way for any of the work that I do. Now, as far as pulling this coil out, uh, I don't know, I've seen guys try to grab hold theirs. Uh, evidently it is not a very good thing to do, so you don't want to get on there with pliers. Uh, so, you make a handy dandy little tool, Let's see if you can focus, that supposedly will grip the top of that without causing any damage. And I can twist it, break the bond, hopefully lift it up out of there. So, we'll give this a whirl. Okay, and out it comes. And there. That coil. Teeny tiny little guy. Looks like we've got three terminals inside. There's that one. Now I'm going to do that for all six of them. I'm going to blow air down into there. Make sure we got nothing down around any of those uh, plugs. And uh, I'll be replacing the spark plugs also. Uh, along with the, uh, the coil. But for right now, we'll go ahead and pause it and I'll pull all of those coils out of there. Okay, I've got all six coils out. And let me say something about this wonderful tool. It works on four of the plugs. It doesn't work on uh, number two or number five. We'll get part of the frame right here that juts down and this is just too tall to get in there. I was tempted just to cut the top off of it, but then uh, I wouldn't have had anything to grab hold of to pull with. So uh, what I ended up doing was I took a very broad bar. There we go, and I think we can see some reliefs molded in here. And that's what this tool grabs. Now, what I did is on uh, number two and number five, I very carefully put a, a pretty broad bar right in there. And as I pried up on this side, I pushed in with this side so that I didn't try to walk this thing over. And I was able to get the two out without any kind of damage to the coils, or those are my hopes anyways. So. BMW does make a flat tool uh, for this particular bike. Uh, I did not get that one. I got this lovely one. So anyways, something learned. Okay, next thing now, I'm going to need to remove the valve cover. Now we've got a bunch of these screws all the way across there. I'm going to have to remove and it gets pretty tight in here. So I'm going to have to use uh, probably my ratchet, little quarter inch ratchet with a bit. And we'll go ahead and pull all of those out. Now, one thing I should mention first, right here, is my cam sensor. So I'm going to need to uh, disconnect that before I pull the valve cover off. Valve cover's off. Now I need to pull uh, another cover on the uh, left-hand side of the engine so I can access the uh, end of the crankshaft. Uh, I have to uh, let you know that there were two. Uh, what were there? Two? Three? Very tight bolts. Upper bolts. Wasn't a lot of clearance between the valve cover and the frame of the bike. So what I ended up having to do was to use my, uh, I think it's a 40. Yeah. Used a 40 Torx bit and a quarter inch wrench. So that got up there. Let me pull that off without any kind of difficulty. Took a little while, but got them out of there. Have no idea. <laughs> well, there is no way I'm going to torque this back in because there's not enough room. I don't have a torque wrench small enough. 
with uh, to allow a socket and that T40 bit in there. So, anyways, all right. Next thing we got to do: pull that cover off from uh, the crankshaft over here. Other thing I should mention: I put aftermarket crash bars in. So, in order for me to pull that uh, valve cover out of the way, I just had to drop these crash bars down. That gave me all the room I needed to slide that out then. Okay, well, back onto this thing. I need to pull, again, this plastic piece and the, uh, and the cover so that I can access the end of that crankshaft. Okay, there's that cover is. And there's the bolt. It's the end of the crankshaft. I'm going to put a socket on there, and then I'll be able to spin the engine over to uh, line up my, my valve. Okay. Well, get the cover off. Uh, looks like this is a 24 millimeter. What it wants me to do is spin it counterclockwise until number one and number six are atop dead center. Number one, hopefully, will be top dead center on uh, compression stroke. Now, what I want to do is bring it over so I get the high spot of both cams. One's going to be pointing this way. Uh, intake on this side is going to be pointing in this direction. And that'll let me know then that I have number one on top dead center compression. This side would be number one. That side over there would be number six. And the ones in between are sequential. So we'll call this one number one, even though my timing chains over over on that side. Right. That is where I'm going to stop. So I've got my exhaust lobe pointing here. I got my intake lobe pointing here. Also I've got on the end of the camshafts is a slot. Uh, it's parallel to the top of the head here. So I know that I got number one here at TDC. Now, next thing I need to do is get in here with feeler gauges, and I need to go in between the cam itself and the top of the bucket, which is sitting over top of the valve. Uh, intake, let's see, I've got my notes here somewhere. Cold engine, intake should be 0.13 millimeter to 0.23 millimeter. Exhaust should be 0.23 millimeter to 0.33 millimeter. And four valves per cylinder, so I have to check uh, my two exhaust here and here, and my intake here and over here. So it might be a challenge to get the camera where you can actually see some of that. I'll give that a whirl here in just a few minutes.